Please welcome the Director of the Museum of Contemporary Art Australia, Elizabeth Ann McGregor, to deliver the 2016 National Art School Occasional Address. Thank you, Michael. Yes, well, I'm glad you didn't change your mind and decide to stay in my seat when you came to the National Art School. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be here today. It's such an extraordinary occasion in such an extraordinary building. And I was reminded as I was sitting here of the last occasion when I spoke here, when we were actually doing a memorial to the late great patron of the arts in the city, Anne Lewis, who was herself an extraordinary supporter of artists from the very beginning of their careers right through. So it gives me great pleasure to be here today and to be able to congratulate you all because you're about to embark on an extraordinary career. And I thought I'd share with you just a little bit about how I ended up running this extraordinary institution in this wonderful city. So much has changed since I arrived here in 1999, not least the piece of technology. Just before I got here in 1999, the MC got email for the first time. And I remember that a PowerPoint was something you put a plug into, not something you presented. But despite these amazing changes, some things have stayed the same. And one of those is the challenges that are faced by all graduates, and particularly by art students. And I know that today some of you will be wondering with some trepidation what you're going to do next. Well, I can assure you I was no different. When I was at school, I had a great passion for music, and I kind of thought I might go to music school, until I was summoned to meet my mathematics teacher one day at the age of 16, who told me that that would be a shocking waste of good brain. That was a little disconcerting. But he did get me thinking. I didn't go into mathematics. I went to university to study languages. But in all honesty, I still wasn't all that keen, until I found I had to take another subject, and I went through the syllabus, ruled out anything starting too early in the morning, anything that interfered with lunch in the student union, or anything that looked difficult, and I landed on art history. Hmm. I turned up for my first lesson, my first lecture, I had no idea what to expect, and within 10 minutes I was completely captivated. Quite by chance, I had found something extraordinary learning about the history of the world through its great art, the history of the Borgias, that amazing family in Italy, the Popes, all these incredible historical figures, none of whom I knew anything about from my upbringing at school. I finished my four-year degree in art history, and I still had no idea what to do. I thought about doing an internship as an art librarian. I thought about doing a PhD. But I felt that was all wrong, and I was very fortunate to find myself on a museum studies course doing a postgraduate. I did that for a year, and then I still had no idea. And as I graduated that day, another piece of luck happened to me. Somebody sent me an advertisement for a job back in Scotland. I was in Manchester at the time. The advert was for a curator driver of a travelling gallery. So I became the world's first bus driving curator. And I did spend the first two weeks of my career learning how to drive a lorry around the roads of Scotland, which was extremely challenging. However, I passed my test. The second challenge was I knew nothing about contemporary art. And as soon as I got into the office, I realized that all the <clears throat> coaching I'd had from a friend of mine the night before in the pub in order to get me through the interview wasn't actually going to hold me in very good stead when I started thinking about what kind of exhibitions I would put on board this bus to take around Scotland. And then I had another piece of luck, again in the pub. I met some artists, where else? <laughs> I was very lucky. They introduced me to the wonderful world of contemporary art, a world where you can't go and look up a book and find out what some famous person has said to validate your judgment. A world where you have to find out for yourself. A world of uncertainty, a world of challenge, a world of risk. I loved it. And I knew immediately, as I set off on the bus with some of the artists and their artwork, that I had finally found my real passion. Not just for the art, but to engage an audience with the art. Because being a bus driving curator is very different. You drive into town in this large green and red bus, 
and you open the doors and everybody comes in. There is no sense of exclusion or that dreadful word elitism. And I found out very quickly that there is an enormous appetite for the ideas that artists want to put forward about themselves, about their lives, and about the world that we live in. And that was it. Engaging artists with audience became my driving passion in life, really through a series of accidents. So if you don't know what exactly you want to do next, apart from be the next great artist and exhibit at the MCA, of course, don't worry, because I'm sure it will, find, it will come. And I really hope that your passion for art is also understood by your families and those of you who are here today. I had a little trouble with my father. He used to make jokes looking at the air conditioning unit. Is that a piece of sculpture? <laughs> so I can totally understand if some of the families today are wondering what on earth these wonderful artists that the National Art School is producing are going to do with their lives. Well, I've got news for you. I think our moment has come. Creativity today needs to be at the centre of our economy. You graduates today are the creative ones, and the future, I am sure, will place more emphasis on what artists can offer to creativity in all aspects of life, not just in the studio. Here, down at the MCA, we promote and participate in all these processes. The conversation about what art can do within society is growing in influence. Creativity is the key to innovation, and pioneering organizations that have played a pivotal role in our rapidly expanding digital age are those that embrace and encourage and foster creativity in their workforces. And how better to cultivate that curiosity than through the work of living artists. Work that requires us to be open-minded and to look at things from different perspectives. Artists, and I'm sure you're no different, are brimming with ideas. And it's the role of arts institutions like the MCA to provide those connections between artists and audiences in a dialogue open to experimentation and innovation. I have no doubt you've experienced this yourself in your studies at this wonderful art school. For me, the ultimate agenda is not just to produce great works of art, but to demonstrate that artists are indeed critical to our society. The arts, and in particularly the contemporary visual arts, are not optional extras. As Michael has said, some 16 million Australians visited art galleries last year. That's extraordinary. I think as artists, you can make a real difference to people's lives, individually or collectively. I've seen it and I've joined every, enjoyed every minute of it during my career. In the past two de decades, we've seen an extraordinary rise in interest in contemporary art in all its forms. Last year, we at the MCA had over a million visitors. So whenever someone suggests that art is irrelevant, because we have the internet, I ask them to consider what a world without art would look like. How dull would that be? And if we abolished art tomorrow, what would society and future look back on as I looked back on those wonderful examples of art history as I studied in Edinburgh? A collector once said to me, art is the gymnasium for the mind. It encourages us all to be creative in our, our thinking, open-minded in our outlook, tolerant in our attitudes. It brings us to a new understanding of ourselves and of complex issues and of a complex evolving world. We need to put artists at the centre of that world and not at the periphery. And if we did, I think we would have a better chance of dealing with all the challenges that face us. So for those of you who are graduating today, whether you become artists or whether you choose to apply your creativity in other fields, you have extraordinary opportunities. Don't be afraid to seize them. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to grasp new ideas and move forward. Don't be afraid to push boundaries. We at the MCA not only exhibit artists and involve them in our public programs, we employ them. We employ them as artist educators, we employ them as hosts, people you speak to when you come into the gallery. So there are many, many opportunities for artists today, and I'm sure all of you in due course will find your own passion for what you wish to do with your life. And in doing so, you've had a great training here in one of Australia's great art schools, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.